Do you let me through, though? Or do I, oh, nope. Yep. <laughs> I just gotta go back down. Here we go. Oh my goodness. So, I don't think I've ever killed Badger. He's the Belchy man. And the tanker. And I don't know if I actually want to do that, because I like playing a good character. Usually when a when a culty faction asks you as your first job to go murder someone. Not doesn't seem like positively karmic karmically positive choice of things to do. So we're gonna not probably. I wanna talk to this fairly young balding scientist though, who looks intent on his job. He says, Yeah, what do you want? Who are you? He says, I'm Crockett, a scientist and fix it guy. Can I get back to it? No, I have some questions. He says, okay, what do you want? What do you do here? He says, I develop technology and get and I get my share of cultist tail, if you catch my meaning. Oh. Ugh. You're not a homologist? These guys don't know real science. I help them justify their extravagance in exchange for some downtime with the ladies and a hefty salary. Okay, I had some other questions I wanted to ask. So what new tech have you developed? He says, let's see, I built a nuclear reactor for the spaceship, I created the hardening process for power armor, and I fix things that are broken. Ah. Uh, I see. Well, I have more questions. You can you can upgrade power armor, yeah? He says, yeah, I can do it, but what are you willing to trade for it? Uh, I can pay you. He says, great, it'll cost you 10000 straight up, no bartering, I need some new equipment. Okay, well, I'll get back to you. So, I can probably come back here once I get some other power armor that is definitely stronger than the T-51B. Uh, once we pay a visit to Navarro. And come back and harden some power armor before, before we just, I don't know, do something violent towards the Hobologists by accident. Wink, wink. But before we head out from the Hobologists, uh... Region? Encampment? Uh, stronghold? What do you call this? I don't know. Uh, we're gonna talk to a well-dressed man. A shop-dressed man. Ah, remember you'll need to be visit AHS-7 when you have completed your task. I'm working on it, but I have some questions. He doesn't even introduce himself. Uh, this is AHS-9, by the way. I We bypassed that for some reason because we did all of our... our business through AHS-7 at the front gate, or at the front door. So, let's speak with AHS-9 and ask him when the spaceship takes off. He replies, the ESS Quetzal will launch when the stars are right. right Oh, I have some questions. Uh, where does all the money we provide go? He said, child, there are some things that you are not meant to know for now. He smiles benignly. Okay, do you have any tasks for me? He says, seek out Badger, whose caustic presence holds those pathetic tanker vagrants together. Rid our fair city of him. When you have done so, visit AHS-7. Sure thing, boss. See ya. So, I wonder if Badger can be killed off without, without, like, anybody knowing. Or something like that. I'm actually tempted to try it. <laughs> and do we have explosives to do so? Yes. Yes, we do. Uh, I may want some, uh, alcohol to lower his perception as well. So I can plant some explosives, disappear, and hide. So, maybe, maybe we'll do that. Maybe we'll just go to Navarro. I don't know yet. Because, regardless, our next thing, hope you know... <laughs> Where we're going. Yes, Marcus, I do. Nobody's made a comment about you yet, so that's a good thing, right? That's a good thing. A giant, giant green man is not as intimidating as I was expecting, or anybody was expecting, really. Uh, we have most companions, but what we really need to do at this point of the game is go and get the vertebrate plans, which means that we're going to Navarro. But before we go to Navarro... We're going to need to drop Marcus off, because I don't think he'll survive the trip. So, we'll go to the chop shop, 
to drop off Marcus where the rest of our companions are. Uh, new Reno. There we go. At some point, I'm gonna, like, get rid of all the fog of war on the map. So I can stitch together a good one. Who are... A gang. So here's something... Here's something really cool. He did... <laughs> Marcus is standing in front of their line of sight. So... I can initiate combat first. Because this gang is not friendly. Dark Hour had a question asking if you could tweak one mechanic to better function, in your opinion, what would you change? Uh, firstly, companion AI. While there are more options in Fallout 2, um, it doesn't seem like a lot of it seems to make a difference when it comes to their own self-preservation and survival, because companions still do die pretty easily, but that can fall back on, like, the combat as a whole in the classic Fallout games being just incredibly brutal and if certain weapons get crits, it's it's all over a lot of the time. So my suggested solution for that would be just have like a stopgap setting of some kind where like if there's so many actions before your companion gets to go, um, they would be stuck at like sub 10% health instead of just outright dying. And this would be prevention for like late game more so like if you're if you're getting dealt like over a hundred damage you'll still have a grace turn to like at least get away with that companion still alive that would prevent a lot of saves coming i think or well how about full control of companions instead of relying on the ai <laughs> it could just be that um also a uh, grid based inventory i would much prefer that over a single list of items that I have to scroll through constantly to find what I want to use. So those are uh, a couple of my uh, ideal suggestions. I'm sure there's more that would come to mind, but that's what came to mind immediately uh, after seeing that question. Thank you, Dark Hour. What would you change uh, on the classic games if, if you were in charge of adjusting or changing some sort of mechanic? I would love to hear your answers below. Okay, a little bit of, little bit of shifting things around in the trunk there. Um, you know, you know, when you when you have to put things away and they're, and it's already full, you gotta kinda Tetris things in there. That's what I was doing with the trunk. There was some free beer in that box there. It's probably pretty warm at this point, but someone's gonna drink it. It's probably not gonna be me. I may force it down someone's gullet to uh, <laughs> lower their perception so I can steal from them. Myron, are you staying fed? Good, you're still upright, okay. Um. So we'll drop off Marcus here. I want to double check and see if he's carrying anything we want to take with us to Navarro, like that's pertinent. Um, he has another set of armor on him. He's got the shovel on him, which I want. Um, the tool, I have more than one of those. Okay. Yeah. So that's what we needed there. Gonna do a little bit of management here. Hello, crew. Nice to see you all. Yes, yes, dog meat. I know you're lonely and sad and stuff. I am so sorry, but uh, this is how it's got to be. Uh, anything that I encounter, <laughs> pretty much anything I encounter from here on out will probably one shot you, dog meat. And I just don't want that for you. I want I want you as a trophy. You're my trophy dog as as well as this cyber dog here. A proof that I can get all the companions in one run. Darlin Valenti left a comment asking the question, which weapon design do you miss the most from Fallout 1 and 2? And they brought up the Power Fist in the first two games that looks a lot more intimidating in those than 3 New Vegas and 4, but also said the Super Sledge from Fallout 4 is cool looking, um, as opposed to just, a, it looks like a standard sledgehammer in the classic games, like it's, there's nothing really too special about it, except it looks more smooth. And I would say, first, I agree with the Power Fist, it looks cooler, but it looks like it, it has a practical application in the later games because it, it's pneumatic rather than uh, energy oriented, uh, if that makes sense. Like like in world, it seems to make more sense than these uh, powered gauntlets that are much more sci-fi in the classic games. Um, I would also mention the Watts, whatever, whatever laser rifle and how it looks in the classic games with the long barrel um, has almost like a Tusken Raider vibe. I'm into that and I'm not 
super into the boxy appearance of it in the later Fallout games. So I think those are, that's a couple that I that I like a lot. Oh, the Gauss rifle too. The Gauss rifle looks way cooler in the classic games than it does in the in the later games. I, especially Fallout 4. Fallout 4, because it became like the railroads, one of the railroads like specialty weapons. Like it just looks thrown together with like magnets all over it and stuff like that. Like I really like the um, Woodstock rifle with metal parts for uh, set up to propel metal slugs at ridiculously violent speeds. So those are a few examples. I'm sure I probably had Im images on screen to make my job harder, um, just so you have an example of what they look like. So the question, thank you for the question. And for the rest of you, is there any design from the classic games that you miss in the newer Fallout games? Things are jostled. Uh, we need to read these books really quick. Um, we have a decent intelligence right now. Yeah, we have an intelligence of six. I, I, that's not really decent. Uh, but our small guns is 51. So we'll definitely benefit from reading these books. I don't know if we're ever going to really use small guns, but I can't really feed these. Feed. <laughs> feed these to my companions. It'd be pretty great if you could, like, increase, like, Skynet, for example, uh, their gun skill. But that's... That's just not a thing that happens. Um, so we're gonna shove Marcus away from the entrance to the car. Um, at least try to. Please move away. What do you want? There we go. Uh, you should wait here till I'll I come back. Just stay here and tighten the vices on my shoulder. You do that. You've done that a lot. I hope your shoulder's okay. <laughs> Something about uh, being an old mutant. Okay, I've. I've done done what I want looting wise in here. We just dropped off a lot of items that we don't need to carry with us. Um, while I was sifting through the trunk, oh, I need to push Marcus again because I could <laughs> look at the trunk. While we were sifting through the trunk, I, I stashed a bunch of Mentats because I realized we had over 20. But uh, I, I also noticed that we do have the Navcom parts from Vault 13, I believe, um, which are one of the other things needed to get the um, the tanker working, the oil tanker to get to the Poseidon platform and uh, ideally not get destroyed um, by the Enclave on our way there. Or maybe that'll just take us to the platform because it's it's Poseidon oil. So we have that. All we really need now is the fob, which I need to save beforehand, which is over here in Navarro. And we're going there solo. We're not bringing companions. I think the dogs would, like, if we actually got to Navarro, we would be okay. But, uh, I'm just, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna go solo. I think it's safer if I want to keep my companions alive. So, but once we come back from Navarro, then we get to decide if we take out Badger or not. Um, let's see. Let's start combat, get a look at these, these things. Regular floater? Regular centaur, a mean centaur, and a nasty floater. Why don't we? Why don't we take some? Why don't we get some XP on our way there? This may be. This may make me full of regret. Berserk asks the question: If you had to pick between big guns or energy weapons in the classic Fallout, what would you choose and why? Um, energy weapons, probably, because big guns burn through ammo pretty quick. They have high strength requirements if you want to be accurate with them anyway. And I think it would be slightly easier to keep an energy weapon supplied more than a big gun. Um, I could be wrong there because I, I haven't played a big guns build in the classic Fallout game. I don't think much at all. Um, not that I remember anyway. Once you have a normal, it's hard to get out of that. But I have done the standard progression up to energy weapons before. So um, I think energy weapons would be the go to on that. Um, what about you and the rest of you? Thank you for the question. Get owned. I'm really surprised or really excited for those of you who haven't uh, witnessed beyond uh, Sergeant Dornan. That is uh, those of you who haven't witnessed what goes on over at uh, the, the Enclave base forward operating base. Uh, Navarro, because you hear about it in places like New Vegas. Um, that was Eddie's whole deal 
in New Vegas was traveling from from the east to the west, which was a, a nice little uh, homage, I guess, to uh, the the evolution of of Fallout between um, Interplay and Bethesda. I thought that was pretty cool. Man, this this nasty floater. It's pretty nasty. It has so much HP. Almost dead. Okay, good. Regular punch? Yay! Okay. That one's dead. Okay, where's the, the mean centaur? We gotta get the mean centaur next. We can't move. Like we're we're locked down like we would be with the um <laughs> the death claws also, because the centaurs apparently are extra wide. Um but I'm I'm really glad. Like uh these these things more needle you than anything. Um, like, st stack poison. Maybe knock you down, of course. Um, but overall, like, these things are fairly decent, I would say, to level up off of. Especially if you have, like, a lot of DPS at a time, like a Bozar, or, of course, I, I have the... <laughs> I say DPS, but... This is not a real-time game. A lot of burst damage at a time. Maybe I should say that. Because DPS doesn't work in a turn-based game. <laughs> Lots of damage. Big numbers. That's what we're doing. Uh, I forgot the centaur's groin doesn't really... Doesn't really do much. Whereas I punched in the eyes and it collapses in a pile of goo. That's pretty cool. Come get me! Y'all are losers! So, forgive me. Those who want me to punch everything in the groin. I'm punching some things in the, in the eyes. Uh, quick hit in the eyes, yeah. P pile of goo! But I, I can, I can punch the floaters in the groin. And then do regular punch. Because the ovipositor does count for something damage-wise. At least that's what it seems like. Oh my goodness. And again. Ah! So many groin shots. I... I don't... I don't wanna... I wonder what it would be like if I asked... If, if someone had counted how many times I punched something in the groin throughout this entire playthrough. I don't know. If, if one of you want to go above and beyond... Make me a groin counter. <laughs> And you can just comment it per episode, too, if you want. Um, because I would notice... <laughs> ...how many shots to the groin per episode, and then we can tally it up by the end. Not not have to worry about, like, new episodes releasing because you would have a comment for each episode on how many, how many groin shots. 3,300 experience for that one fight. Really great. Um, I am poisoned, however. And... Did I, did I scroll past it? I did. Anti-venom. Antidote. Whatever you want to call it. Off we go to Navarro. <gasps> There's the Cafe of Broken Dreams again. Why are we here again? Hello, everyone. Hi. What's what's going on? Uh, so my player is so stupid. Okay. Hi, so you're descended from the Fallout 1 hero. Wow, I'm Tandy. Hi. I didn't want to just blurt it out, but your grandfather sure was cute. Sigh. <laughs> oh, Tandy. You're weird. That ship has sailed. Hasn't it? I don't know why we ran into the cafe again. Uh, an enclave patrol. Do we want to... Do we want to encounter an enclave patrol? Can I show you how devastating these guys are? As a loyal soldier of the Enclave, I got orders to kill you. Hope you don't mind. Okay. Um, so these guys, I believe mostly these guys are armed with pulse pistols. So I have a fighting chance. If I go... up here... then punch this one in the groin. And then... punch normally. Ah! Ow. That one's got a got a Gauss pistol. Uh, that one's 
Yeah, we're, we're good. Yep. <laughs> you have died. Your village is lost. Doomed to die of starvation. Did you see how quickly I died? <laughs> good thing I saved after this fight, huh? A special thanks to those supporting me on Patreon, including Wasteland Legends, Sven, and David Hoover. You can catch future episodes of this playthrough on Wednesdays and Fridays, noon and 10 a.m. Pacific. Thanks so very much for watching. I'm Kato Genesis, and may you wander the wasteland like you own it.